Given a matrix A, we need to know its spark. We can use the mutual coherence or the bubble function to bound this value from below. Could we offer an upper bound as well, so that we could get a clear view of the range of possible values it may get? We present such a method now. Recall the definition of the spark, being the count of the smallest set of columns from A that are linearly dependent. Put differently, it is the cardinality of the sparsest non-trivial vector in the null space of A. We would like to get a good evaluation of the spark, especially since the lower bounds we have presented earlier are just too pessimistic. We develop such a computational method in several steps. First, assume that the smallest linearly dependent set includes the first column. Thus, we can get the spark exactly by solving the following problem. This is the simple P0 problem where the linear equation is homogeneous, that is, b is set to be 0. In order to avoid the trivial solution x equals 0, we force the first entry in x to be 1. Since we have assumed that the first column is involved in the best set, x1 being 1 loses nothing. Suppose we could have solved this task. Where is the spark? The answer is simple. It is the number of non-zeros in the solution. There are two problems with the task we have just defined. First, we assume that we know that the first column is within the minimal linearly dependent set. In reality, we have no such knowledge. Therefore, we propose to define m different optimization tasks, each forcing a different column to participate in the solution. Once we found the m solutions, the spark is the cardinality of the sparsest of these solutions. However, we cannot solve this P0 problem, so what can we do? Starting from the M P0 problems, which lead to the perfect discovery of the spark, we move to an approximation where we replace the L0 norm by an L1. Clearly, these are linear programming problems, and as such, they are manageable. So instead of searching the sparsest solution, we search for the shortest ones in L1. Thus, the minimal cardinality within this set of solutions stands as an upper bound to the true spark, since with the L1, the solutions are necessarily denser. We conclude and summarize. We should solve M linear programming problems and get their M solutions. Then we should count the number of non-zeros in each of these solutions. The smallest of those is an upper bound on the spark. We proceed by demonstrating this with a MATLAB demo.